So this is the Sigma FPL, and I think it's quite a misunderstood camera. So in order to do it justice, I've come here, to the base of Helm's Deep. Or in reality, the base of the Upper Noyad Reservoir, here in the Banai Brikainiog, or what used to be known as the Brecon Beacons here in South Wales. It's no longer in use, which is why I can stand here at the bottom of it and not die, which is a bonus. It's kind of interesting in that they had to drain it because it was falling into disrepair. It's a very old reservoir now, and it's not really necessary. So it sits here guarding the valley until eventually it falls over. But it's the perfect place to come and test the Sigma FPL because this camera has a 61 megapixel sensor in it, and yet at the same time, it doesn't have a mechanical shutter. It doesn't have image stabilization. So it's quite a difficult camera to know what to use it for, but what it is great for is landscapes. When you're hiking in an area like this, all the walks here are at least two hours out to a point to take a, a good landscape photo of some description, in my opinion. It's arduous. Do you want to bring a 10 to 15 kilo backpack with all of your landscape camera gear in it? No. And I don't want to do that today either, but I've had to because I've brought my filming camera <laughs> and it's very, very heavy. How much better life would be if you could just bring this in one of these? What Americans would term a fanny pack, but in the UK that's hilarious. Although we also call it a bum bag, which is much better. So I'm going to call this a waste pack. You can fit the FPL with the 45mm f2.8 and the 90mm f2.8 in this. You could just go hiking with this. It would be so much easier and so much more relaxing and much better on your legs. But why is this camera not so popular here in the West? Well, it's a good question. So in Japan, the first FP, the more video-centered camera, I suppose, was surprisingly popular. It topped the camera sales for a month at least, from what I found online. And that's not something that was ever really replicated over here. I've never seen someone shooting with one of these here in the UK. But why? For certain tasks, this is a brilliant camera. For many other tasks, it's not. But no camera is perfect at everything, or if they are, they tend to be big and heavy, or they tend to be horrifyingly expensive. But for the price that this costs, which is under £2,000, you're getting a 61 megapixel landscape camera. And it's a bit of a looker. Now, most modern cameras are made and designed in Japan, but for me, I think this is one of the very few that feels like it was designed for Japan. It's almost industrially cute. There are quite a number of other high-resolution full-frame cameras on the market that would be good for landscape photography, but this does offer a few bonuses other than just being a small camera. Anyway, it's got a low ISO mode where you can go all the way down to ISO 6. That's quite impressive, and it does this in a compositing photo sort of way. Very impressive, and I'm curious to try it out, and that's what I'm going to do now. But I will have to swap this around because you have to stick it on a tripod to do that. So we'll take a couple of comparison shots. I'll do one at a normal ISO and then we'll do ISO 6. It's a little wild process. So the first image is ISO 160 and the second is ISO 6. And the difference is quite hard to see when you're zoomed out, but there is a colour cast change and that is the result of a reduction of the noise and you can see this better once zoomed in. Okay, it's now quarter past five. I need to be at the top of a mountain by about half eight going to be a bit of a slog and that doesn't make for the world's most exciting viewing so I'm going to teleport up there and while I'm doing that 
Take a look at this photo. I'm extremely pleased with this, mostly because of the effort it took to get it. I didn't go to bed. I drove up here to the Banagrakan Yoga at 2 a.m. I then slogged up the really unpleasant constant gradient path known as the motorway, which is not fun. It's just non-stop. And I got up there for sunrise and it was spectacular. This is easily one of my favorite views in Wales and in fact, the entire UK. It's really quite sublime. As you can see, I'm now at the top of Cribbin. There's the customary pile of rocks. I'm wearing my help, I've fallen down a mountain, but please can you find my hat hat. And in the background, you can see Penavan, the tallest peak here in the Banai Brikaniog. But I don't think the sun is going to hit it, which is kind of annoying. And so I'm weighing up whether I change shots and maybe go and look over this way instead, which is going to have sun on it. Ironically, probably the best peak to, be, to photograph would probably be this one. But I'm not walking all the way over there. Anyway, let's go and talk a little bit more about the FPL. Okay, so while we're waiting for Golden Hour to start, and I now have my shot sort of lined up, let's talk a little bit more about the handling of this, because essentially it's a tiny metallic rectangle. And that doesn't sound like it would be very ergonomic, but if you add this tiny little grip on, which is an extra, then I actually find it extremely comfortable to hold. This is a very well-designed grip, and that's quite bizarre to me because it's such a small addition. You don't need anything larger than this. I find this quite convenient. I think when you're doing landscape photography in particular, you do want it on a tripod. I have the Peak Design travel tripod, which is quite heavy for a travel tripod and kind of annoying, so I wouldn't necessarily recommend that one. I would personally pick up something very small and lightweight and I'd just use it on the floor or something if it was me. That would make sense. But because the camera itself is very lightweight, the tripod is stable and that's really quite nice. So overall, this is an easy way to use it. As you can see, it's quite cold up here, hence the jumper as well now and the gloves. As far as the control layout goes, having the power button and the video photo switch on the over on the left is kind of annoying but it's such a small camera it really doesn't matter that much the only real complaint i have is that it's quite time consuming to change your focus point this is something that they could fix in firmware and it's probably something i could reassign to another button but the actual process of having to hit the focus points button then a e l and then moving the focus point around it's kind of annoying when on most sort of mirrorless cameras or DSLRs, you just move a joystick around to move it. It would be nice to have a different option, but there is no joystick on this camera. Aside from that though, I have no problems. I've got some dirt on it, which, um, sorry Sigma. I have no other problems with it really. I like the design of it. The lack of an EVF is annoying, but I don't like EVFs in the first place. So I don't know what I'm complaining about. They have an EVF unit that you can plug into the side of it. It is quite expensive and it makes the camera quite a bit wider. It sort of comes out to here. I do have it in the bag, but I, I really can't be bothered fiddling about with it right now. It isn't really something that I would use personally, but I'm sure there's a lot of photographers who really like it. So the lack of a hot shoe is a bit of a problem. In the box, you get a hot shoe adapter that sticks on the side again actually quite like the engineering of that it's not quite as big as the evf unit but it's unfortunate that there's not even a cold shoe by default it would have been nice if it sort of came up here there used to be a small rig cage available for this camera and i don't think it's available anymore unfortunately when it comes to lenses for this camera you've got a lot of options it's an l mount camera and that's very convenient however there is the option of getting it as a kit with the 45 2.8 this is a very good lens. 
It's one of the smallest available L-mount lenses and it's not a ridiculous fixed aperture manual focus pancake lens. It's a good lens, it's sharp, it's easy to use, it works really well. And without the lens hood in particular, that's a really nice compact little thing. The lens hood is a fancy metal sort of affair. Very nice, but you can reverse it as well. It's nice, it works as a setup. I would probably pick up the kit if it was my choice because I like this lens, it's very good. But this is a bit of a specialized camera. Would you have this as your only camera? I don't know, maybe. It seems to be the case for some people in Japan at least. Personally, one of the biggest selling points of this camera to me is that this is a specialized camera. This is great at landscape photography in particular. And I have an S52X which means I have other L-mount lenses and I have a general camera, but then I can have a very high resolution landscape camera and it doesn't take up a ton of space. I can pack it alongside the S52X. It is a very convenient thing to have if you're gonna have multiple camera bodies. Unfortunately, the sun has just gone behind a cloud, but as a cloud rolls over Penavan, which is, um, very dramatic looking. So, as I've got that on the uh, tripod, may have to wait and see. This could actually make it an interesting photo. But how far away am I? Hmm. If it's starting to look good, I may run over there. Probably got another couple of minutes before the sun clears that cloud though. This is the thing up here in the mountains, the weather can change very quickly. Unfortunately, the sun has been sat behind that cloud for a while now, and I've not gotten the golden hour at all yet. I'm gonna put the 28 to 200 on this, which looks hilarious, but it works well. Okay kind of comical but in these sorts of situations it's a good one to have oh don't really love staring straight into the sun I don't know why, but every time I plan out a video like this where I am going to come up and film myself on top of a mountain, I forget how bloody cold it is up here. Which has the downside that I can't really think straight, and so I can't remember which bits I've missed. So for that, and the other reason being that my car is two hours that way, we're going to cut back to the office. So I am now back in the office. It is a week later, and... It didn't take me a week to get back here. It did take me a very long time though, and I was very tired by the time I did get back. And apparently I've still not learned my lesson about not recording on the tops of mountains because um, it, it's taken me a long time to clean up that audio. And I didn't get any particularly interesting photos in the first place. But I ha do have some uh, concluding thoughts on the Sigma FPL, which has made its way back to Sigma. It's an interesting camera that if I was a more specialized photographer, if I was a landscape photographer only, I would be very much interested in that camera. However, I'm a very unfocused photographer. I just kind of like taking photos of everything. And for my use case, a more generally suitable camera is useful. That's why I have the Nikon Z9, which can kind of do anything. But I do think that there is a market for more specialized devices. I like those sorts of things. It's just not necessarily affordable to buy one for every single discipline that I want to do. I like Sigma's idea behind the camera, and I do think that they could go further with it in the future. I do think that the, the build quality is something that appeals to a lot of people. There's not many camera companies that make it, make devices that are strangely likeable and i do think that the fp and the fpl fall into that category 
it's something that works very well for Leica, for example, in that their cameras aren't necessarily the best, but people buy them anyway because they feel fantastic to use as well. The experience is what you're buying and getting a quite a large markup in order to do so. But Sigma are very well placed to do this as well. They make everything in Japan, they make everything themselves, and the FPL feels fantastic in the hands. To actually operate, it's not quite there. I do feel like the lack of a mechanical shutter makes it less satisfying to shoot with, and putting one in would probably solve a lot of the problems that this camera exhibits. It's quite hard to hand hold, for example, because the slow sensor readout, the lack of IBIS, just means that uh, you can introduce wobbles in the pictures quite easily, and a mechanical shutter would solve that problem. So, how could they fit one in the camera body? Well, they, they couldn't in the current FP body design, but they could make a very similar camera with only one major change, really, which is to change the body. Because it's great in its current iteration, but they set out to make a modular camera. You can get two different viewfinders, I think, that stick on the back of it or on the side of it. So there was the one I showed earlier, but there's one that goes on the back for directors. You can get cages, you can do all sorts of interesting things with it because it's almost like a blank slate. But they're not the first company to make a modular camera design. And this is my favourite. This is, in fact, it's my favourite camera. This is the Mamiya 645-1000S, and it is fantastic. It is just a very, very enjoyable camera to use. This is a modular camera. You can change the viewfinder on this very easily. It just pops off. I have two. I've got this. This is the waist level finder, which uh, pops up so that you can look down in the sun. as it go back together? So this sort of pops up, and you just sort of, you know, you look down there. All very exciting. It makes lots of exciting noises, lots of clicks and clunks. Everything about this is satisfying. Is it the most practical camera? No. And it's specialised. You wouldn't shoot action with this. And that's where I think the Sigma FP line could potentially go, or whatever they could call it in the future. If they could make a box variant of the FP, so you put the screen on the top, you have a system for attaching different viewfinders, and you put a mechanical shutter in, which having a deeper boxy body would give them the capability to do so. They would have a really unique and quite appealing camera, because the only other camera like that on the market is the Hasselblad 500 system, where you have to buy a film body and then stick a digital back on it, and that's going to set you back a lot of money. And even still, the screen is on the back and you're still just using an optical viewfinder on the top. These are things that are kind of frustrating. And I do think that there is a gap in the market for that. If you've never shot a camera like this, there's something very rewarding about it. It's also something very counterintuitive and weird about it because everything's mirrored. But you hold it against your body most of the time. It feels quite comforting. And I do think that if one company was going to make something like that in the modern day, I think Sigma could do a really good job of it. And if they did, it would be a camera that I'd use just for fun, if that makes sense. But if nothing else, the Sigma FPL is a very well-made camera, and it's very good at a small subset of tasks like landscape photography. Fairly interestingly, since I started filming this video, I have come across a bunch of aftermarket modifications that people have started making to their Sigma FPs and FPLs, one of them including adding a tilt screen to it. Obviously this voids your warranty and I'm not necessarily recommending that you go and do it, but this kind of demonstrates that, that this camera is very liked in the market. They, there's just a few downsides to it that people want to improve upon, and that's very interesting to me. Maybe that's another opportunity for Sigma as well, is making a camera that is more easily modifiable. There's a market for that, considering how much vendor lock-in there is across the camera market in general. So, lots of options in the future. I enjoyed my time with the FPL. If you've ever used one, or if you've used the FP, or if you own either of them, please put your comments down below. I'd be really interested in knowing your thoughts. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you next time when I won't be up a mountain again, hopefully.